CC is on. Bam. All right, boys. So, I, this is day five of uh, uh y'all can go ahead and say hi to youtube this is going on the, this is going to be a youtube video and say hi youtube see your name on screen he <laughs> um this is day five i have been told to watch this documentary i've been interested in it from everything i've heard about what they did with the original game and a a r r so i'm really excited i want I, i'm i'm curious i want to see what what it was so i'm gonna get into it here we go boys Hi, YouTube. I was here through. Yeah, the flashbangs. Thank God. Hi, Twitch. Oh, wait. All right. Let's get a little cinematic. Let's turn this off. Square is buried deep into the culture of Japan. Originally a spin-off from Masafumi Miyamoto's father's powerline construction firm, for over 30 years its games have helped power the rise of Japanese games development. There are no shortage of games that live under the Square Enix banner, but none as big as Final Fantasy. I mean, yeah. From a Western perspective, there's an air of mythos around the company. The accepted truth behind the series' title is that it was named Final Fantasy as it was Square's make-or-break game to avoid impending bankruptcy. And even if the real answer has more to do with creating an acronym that could be pronounced by both Eastern and Western audiences, it's that first story that gets told. That's the legacy of this series. Stories about adventures that get passed from generation to generation. As nearby as the arcades of Akihabara and as far as the playgrounds of- Video needs to be a little louder. All right, my bad. We'll turn it up a little louder. Europe. As the Final Fantasy better? series has moved from numeral to numeral, there have been high points and better? low. But with each new game comes the promise of a new story, a new myth. The story of what happened with Final Fantasy XIV is one such myth. What we know about it comes from old reviews, archive message board threads, and through conversations with those who were there. The reason for this is that the original version of Final Fantasy XIV doesn't exist anymore. Unlike the vast majority of other old games, there is no way of playing it. It was redacted, painted over. Where once stood a game that threatened to sink the Final Fantasy brand forever, right, now stands the second most popular subscription MMO in the world. And as the years pass- I'll say this about uh, all the trailers and stuff, like so they showed some of them. They are really cool. They're some of the coolest trailers I've seen in video games. They're crazy. Asos, the myth of that original version and its incredible redemption story are at risk of disappearing. How did it all happen? How did the same studio that shipped a broken mess turn it all around in two years? Why did they make the decision to keep the old version still alive while secretly working on a brand new game? And how did they manage to make all of this, the redesign and rebirth, part of the game's lore? We knew this was a story worth telling, not only for those who were there to see it all. Oh, is that, is that, so is that the day that shut down? Is that the day it shut down? Like the big oh shit, that's crazy. So it was like a whole ass in-game event too. Holy crap! Go down, but for the millions of you who have never heard about this, who never knew the extraordinary lengths the development team went to to save this game, so we did just that. Pack your bags, friends. No clip is heading to Tokyo. Got a ringer trailer is a real highlight for tra or trailers. That, that that trailer was sick. That trailer was sick. No clip presents. <laughs> what the fuck? No, no smoking. Oh, my bad. No smoking. No smoking. Someone once asked Yoshi P if they would consider making 1.0 servers. That, that, I, I don't think that would. No. Yeah, yeah, he even said no, God, oh, please no. <laughs> Nightmare. Sega. Kind of bumping. Cause that's Limsa. Someone made a remastered version of the ARR trailer that looks much sharper than the original. I'll have to take a look at that. 
That reminds me of uh, the guy that remastered all the uh, WoW or some of the WoW trailers. And they actually hired that guy from Blizzard to do the, like the classic trailers. It's really cool. Love this documentary. Can't stick around, but enjoy the stream. Hey, Tara, have a very wonderful day. About to dive in. We're about to dive in. Dive on in. Dive on in. Is that Louis Slaw? Is that the Louis Slaw guy? Part one. One Hello point and welcome oh. to Shinjuku, Tokyo, home of Godzilla, restaurants full of dancing robots, and Square Enix, one of Kaijus, the most prolific man. video game companies I love Kaijus. in the world. For the past few months, I've been playing catch up with this story, playing the latest version of the game, talking to players, and watching community an retrospective era, series. All like right, the speakers well, we'll network's fantastic fall and rise of Final Fantasy XIV. Well, that was uh, my goal to make sure swap. we asked the right questions when we sat down with the team. Oh, it's Godzilla! During time here in Shinjuku, we're going to talk to everyone from the engineers who worked on the original game to this the the chunker cat managers and even the CEO of the company. All to allow them the opportunity to tell their side of this fascinating story. The fall and rise of Final Fantasy XIV happened in real time in front of millions of people around the world. But we wanted to know about this story from an entirely new perspective, from inside the corporate machine. Oh, it's still crazy it to me. It was like an in-game event. That is launch, so fucking cool. And ultimately, it's incredible rebirth. My name is uh, Michael Christopher Koji Funk. Um, I am the English localization lead for Final Fantasy XIV. And my middle name being Koji, it's not something I gave myself, it's a, a name my father gave me. My father was stationed uh, in Japan for two years in the Navy when he was young. Damn. Went back to the States. My mom had me. Um, Speakers Network series is a strong I recommend you watching that. Family Maybe was not having on none of that. The so documentary. they kind of snuck it in the middle name. Maybe we'll like put that for a, uh, a night so stream. I guess the go you know, the joke was on when we're hanging family. out, we can do that. My dad being in the Navy, I saw when we were hanging out, you know, about Japan other than he really liked Japan, but he didn't learn any of the language. So I always knew that my name was Japanese, but beyond that, I really didn't know anything about Japan. But there was always that little seed in there. And then when I got into high school, there's a Japanese class. Audio still a little low. Games. Oh, they make games in Japan. Hey, let me study Japanese. If I study Japanese, I can play all those cool Japanese I'm going to go and turn up just a little bit. Like, Koji Fox, he's amazing. I met, you met him? And it kind of just That's snowballed. sick. Yeah. Uh, when I graduated from high school, um, I took a trip to Japan for three weeks. I'd like to take a trip to Japan. Everything, and I fell in love it, with it's it. been like and one of the places I've always wanted to go. I got to visit a lot of schools. Um, and it's not just like because of Tokyo and everything. I'd really like to see like the countryside and everything. I think Japan is just a beautiful country. This will be easy. Um, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be, but I studied a couple years at a, at a university in America, then transferred over to Japan, started over four years at a university in Japan. Wow. Got my teaching license and uh, yeah, it's hard work being wow. a teacher. Yes, I, I mean, I loved I, it, but yeah. I mean, it was very draining. And that's why pretty much after you'd go to school six in the morning, for morning basketball practice Ooh, when yep, I was the basketball yep. coach because that's my principal said, hey, you're tall. You're, <laughs> you're tall. You're classes, the basketball coach. True. I'd have my home room class, then I'd have you know six or seven other classes teaching. Then you'd have after school. All of a sudden it's, oh, there's after school basketball. Yep. And then you'd get home and you'd correct. So I was really basketball practice you know, school Shit, every man. day. I, was very I play B ball, brother. I would go home and that's for FF14. It's so humble and sweet. It seems like you never got to a family place. I just watched able to relax. Like like being able to go into I can't wait. my little room and turn off the lights and put on my headphones and you know get into that world of Vanadio was something that helped me escape. Is this the first the online game? Did that was the first online then game. Then it just happened to be you know one day I was online you know checking for eleven related Eleven's information the and I saw the other online, was online game right. For a translator and it just kind of wow that would be really cool koji wasn't alone final fantasy 14 was launched in 2010 mm. but the story of this game starts eight years earlier with the launch of final fantasy 11 square's first mmo the early days there of is, online yeah. many of the team who worked on 14 started on 11. One of those was Kasuga-san, who joined the company in 1999 to build the network infrastructure for this fledgling MMO. I remember when that happened. Holy crap. I didn't have a Dreamcast. 
Yep, that little fucking thing right there, boys. まあ、まずね、どういうことなったかというと、いや、オルティマオンライン。11 was my first MMO. I hadn't played one before. I remember purchasing the PlayStation 2 broadband unit because they were all sold out. I ended up paying double on like some Yahoo auction or something like that. Ridiculous, but I had to play it. We got a new internet connection. Hey, we were PS2 on was goaded. Modem at that time, but because it's still the best know, console ever made. A new modem, we had to upgrade to ISDN Easily. 128. You know. But yeah, it was definitely worth it. It was something that was completely new to me, but you know, fascinating. And ever since then, I've you know been into MMOs. It was that was the gateway drug for me. You know, going <laughs> 11, Eleven was your gateway. Trying, you know, some of the Western was MMOs as well. Getting into World of Warcraft, seeing the differences um, between the two. Personally, I think I it's did a little bit of EverQuest too I mean, here in Japan from the Western market because yeah, it is for everyone it, uh, in the globe. I mean, it's very first. Uh, MMORPG on the console, PlayStation 2, and also, I mean, it was the first ever cross-platform. Wait, it MMO was cross-platform. Two and uh, Xbox 360. That's the crazy. The one is the most Japanese people don't really like to speak. I mean, chat in public. Right. So, I mean, in the world, there's a lot of characters, oh, bro, but it's very quiet it's because people are telling, using a, a tell instead of a say or a shout, and then. But if you want, if you go to the Western world, game world, I mean, everyone, every single one is shouting around. So yeah, that's a huge difference. Yeah. You know, while in the West, you know, you have your EverQuests and you had your Ultima online. Fucking EverQuests, bro. In Japan, there was none of that. And then, so Final Fantasy XI was really one of the first MMOs in Japan. And so getting to work with basically the pioneers of the Japanese MMO um, was really exciting. On the other hand, I mean, you could also say that it was possibly kind of a curse in the sense that um, they were all, you know, doing their own thing. They had their vision of what yeah. an MMO should be and what a Japanese MMO should be. Um, and then me, again, not having played an MMO before, getting on this team and thinking, okay, this is an MMO. And team is your first MMO and because working in that of project, I was to ability I kind to play of, one. you know, yeah. started I mean, thinking, okay, this is what an MMO is. Mine was Burning Crusade and WoW. That one day I start and playing WoW. And I think like, just like oh. old WoW is so easy <laughs> oh. to get into because it's so simple. Seeing the differences between the two and saying like, okay. What and I that was what was I liked about Final Fantasy XIV as well. 11, it's like you know, simple to get into. For 20 it doesn't take like an um, omega amount of brain power or skill just to get into the game and have fun. Pull too many crabs and <laughs> pull too many crabs. True. I thought that was normal. And then he's like, oh, that's not normal. Is no, it? no. Base game Final Fantasy XI had already released, and they were working on the first expansion oh, pack, uh, okay. Rise of the Zalart. I was part of yes. the team that was working to get Reset stuff. Um, the base game and Rise of Zalart all translated before the Japanese Rise of Zalart was finished, so we could all release at the same time. Right. Did you get it on time? I got it on time. I got it on time. Nice. I haven't nice. missed a deadline yet. That's, that's one. He hasn't missed a single deadline. Final what a Chad, XI bro. It was a huge success for Square Enix. It established a concurrent user base of around a quarter of a million players for years. That's it was the most profitable Final Fantasy game ever. At one stage, it was the sixth most popular game on all of Xbox Live. 
More than that, it established the Japanese style of MMO. And when the decision was made in 2005 to start work on a sequel, the new MMO was built around things that made Eleven successful, focusing, like most Final Fantasy games do, on beautiful graphics and an interesting battle system. This new game was to be directed and produced by the same duo that shipped Eleven, series veteran Hiromishi Tanaka and Nobuaki Komodo. Final Fantasy XIV was announced for Windows and PlayStation 3 in 2009, <laughs> but behind the scenes, the development team was struggling to put the pieces of its new world together. で、ま、ディテントとしては、ファンタナファンタジー、ディテントとしては、ファンタナファンタジー、ディテントとしては、ファンタナファンタジー、ディテントとしては、ファンタナファンタジー、ディテントとしては、ファンタナファンタジー、
、まあ、実際にリリースされる 8, 8月ぐらいまでの間になっていたことで,で、まあ、ゲームが本当によ,よくないっていうのがこう、まあ、認,認識されて自覚さ,されていくっていうのは結局ベータが始まって製品版が始まってっていう、まあ、8月9月10月ぐらいまでの期間に起きたことなんですねでと実際にはリリこうチーム内の意識としても、oh, リリース前、そのベータが始まる前から、本当にこれをリリースしていいものかどうかっていう議論はある程度、そのチーム全体でオフ,ィそのオフィシャルであったわけではないですけれども、開発者の中ではやはりその世に出していこうリリーかどうかっていうのは議論がありました。Was it just the mentality that, oh, we're not like, <laughs> that's like their、Arrow. thing, and we have our very own successful thing over here, we're going to just make another one of those? Right. And、uh, that's really what it felt like is that we're going to continue doing what we did because it succeeded before.、Yeah. Succeeded why before, wouldn't succeed why wouldn't it succeed, succeed again, right? And seeing that direction, you know, them taking that direction, and knowing that, you know, having worked on 11, that yes, they were very successful, seeing the success that they had with. Final Fantasy XI, seeing these great creators you know, creating something that was, I mean, revolutionary.、Um, but then on the other hand, knowing that what they were doing was, yeah, but maybe that might not that worked six or seven years ago. But yeah, you can't just sit、then. in and, I mean, complacency. I think there was even one when you make something new, you kind of sometimes got to、uh, move forward. If you just release the same thing like point where six years later,、so、it might not, not be worked the same. Scathing mail. And send it out to the whole、also、team. The before telling anyone else on localization he was going to write it, and then we all get it at the same time. The dev team, we're reading it. Like, wow, this is really terrible.、Worlds. I hope he doesn't. Oh, he sent it to the、that's, whole team. <laughs> because he just got really frustrated. Because he okay, could, I'll, I'll look him, at that. I mean, they were being very stubborn. They weren't. The whole、um, you know, they hadn't moved on. Whereas the rest of the world had moved on and, on and, and adapted、um, you know, with the release of WoW and, and what they had done. Whereas. You know, the team don't show like, why. No, we're gonna Please don't, with sh- don't show why. And that's don't show why. Then start feeling more about more concerning the situation. I mean, this is not fixed, not fixed, not fixed. Oh, then, oh, you announced the、Wait. launch date, but it's not fixed. So, yeah, but still, the, some major portion of people are still thinking, still be,、uh, believing, no, 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 it's, it's better, still better. better phase, last phase, but still better. So, it could be, I mean, Uh, I mean, people change it. The game still did that all the time, though, except they just put it under early access. Thinking, okay, this project's going to be great, to uh oh, there might be some problems. Can we get, can we fix them? Can we fix them? Okay, we can't fix them. Is there anything we can do?、Uh, I don't know. It was, yeah, it was a very taxing experience. I bet. It was probably extremely stressful. The team、though. crossed their fingers and hoped that the game's beta problems were simply that the same issues that most MMOs have, ones that could be fixed with patches once the game entered live operations. And so Final Fantasy XIV Online launched on September 30th, 2010. It sold well its first week and after a month had over 600,000 players okay, okay. swarming into its world. But it didn't take long for the cracks to appear. The problems、uh-huh. in the beta were echoed by new players. The game was sluggish, the servers crashed. And the Orzeans quickly ran out of things to do. Quests were limited, and the fatigue system even made grinding for XP next to impossible. Oh, it just、Critics、sounds like Shadowlands. Let's get right down to it. Unless you've got the patience of Job or some kind of masochist, you shouldn't play Final Fantasy XIV. Its problems are so vast that I could spend hours talking about them. The awful interface, the recycled content, the stringent limits on questing, the useless maps, the stupid market ward, these issues and dozens more constantly have you asking that age old question what were they thinking? This just sounds like Shadowlands. So, what was it like seeing public reaction? Yeah, it was, it was very, I mean, very disheartening.、Um, because. You know, you'd want to you'd look at those and you'd want to say, no, no, they don't understand. They don't know, you know what's going on here. Or, or, you know, but deep down, you'd know they were、yeah. right. And that was what kind of, you know, that dagger in your heart and it's twisting because, you know, you want to defend what you worked on. I mean, the people that I worked、oh, with. Oh, yeah. Naturally, you want to defend everything, but it's like. 
you know, there's a, a lot point of them. where you gotta I sit down and like, look, 11. this is a problem. It needs to be fixed, and I'm glad they um, they did it. But a lot of people you know, wouldn't do that. And you see people on online, you know, bashing the work they did, and I know how hard they worked. I know how many hours they put, and I know that like in the last yeah, three the reviews or four were months, people were kind, basically although living accurate and FFN and horrible to read. I remember all putting their hundred percent into this game. That was like even the simple stuff like teleport and the level design, detail world design, etc. Kind of crash and burn. Yeah, I'll have you look at that. Like a and night stream or like I'm just say, oh, that sucks. This person off stream because I do like shit. No, their work seeing is terrible. that the behind the scenes it, stuff. It hurts, but it hurts more because if I was not here and was a user and had played that game, I mm -hmm. probably would have said you would have said the same thing. thing. That's the thing. <laughs> の、あの、at the MMO, so like, kind of expected, but 14 was like, you didn't have the room for error. Everyone already liked 11. I mean, the first few months, it was just a, an endless stream mm. of translating apology mails Ouch, from, man. you know, producers and directors and, and you know, finding more out, how bad the game um, was. trying to figure out different ways so of saying not or something. Yeah, like, um, dude, when you, the more you say it, it would just be taxing. It's like you put all this work into Japan something and it just came out company, like that. Like, like, where, you know, like said, you, you can defend it, but it's like, the culture. But then trying if you to put your that it's like, feet okay, in the player's shoes, said, you're just sorry, like, in this one post, okay, and then yeah. From you know the American myself, it's like, yeah, people are going to look at it as insincere. And with it coming from like a big you know, company, company like Square Enix, and then trying to explain that to the team, it's like, no, we have to apologize. Like, Something yeah, has to, to be done. But, and it just became we weren't talking about the game anymore. We were talking about how to translate apologies, and it seemed like that lasted for sorry, you know, a couple busy. months. Well, after no we worries, see no a huge drop. I mean, after right after the launching, launch timing, we got a. Uh, some I mean good number of the subscribers again that fall fall I mean oh, as yeah. you can imagine so I mean it was failure and we announced failure so we see uh, lots of decline. あ、さっきも話した通り実際にその開発内でもそのまあリリースするべきかっていうかリリースできるクオリティがあるかっていうのはあって yeah, they, it shouldn't just been released. Uh, it is what it is. 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 It is it work out. Yeah, it was just that, that wishful thinking, like, if we just release it, maybe we can just, you know, get it fixed. まあ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、まだ、
テレビの中テレビっていうのはその<笑>見るものだと思っていた子供の時に。ところはそのマリオブラザーズで初めてそのコントローラーを握ってゲームをプレイした時にまずそもそもテレビのものを自分が自由に動かせるってことがものすごいショックで友達の家でプレイさせてもらったんだけどドラゴンクエストっていうあの日本で RPG をまあ大きく広めたタイトルを触った時にアクションではないゲーム数字のやり取りでこんなにまたさらにゲームは面白くなるんだっていうのを特にストーリーラインがあってっていうまた次のカルチャーショックを受けて RPG っていうチャンネルにものすごくあのなんだろうフォーカスしていくことになったかなとは思います当然その翌年に出た「ファイナルファンタジー」にもその映画的なその演出ファンタジーをより強く打ち出したっていうところにもすごい衝撃を受けてたので I can... やっぱり。I'm gonna pause for a second. I can kind of relate to that. Like how he says, like, well, Dragon Quest really got me into the RPG side of things. Yoshi P is amazing. He really cares and cried on stream when he announced e n d w a l k e r would be delayed two weeks because he knew everyone had already taken their holiday. Sometimes you don't, want it, you don't want another repeat, man. Sometimes it's not the delay, it's just what you need. But I, I can kind of relate to what he's saying. Mine wasn't Dragon Quest. My like, first intro to like, a grand fantasy, like a grand story and adventure was Zelda Ocarina of Time. It was literally like the first game I beat when I was a kid. And that got me hooked. It got me to think that video games are just much more than mindless things. Like, I, I had just completed a journey. Something amazing, dude. I, I went to the volcano. I went to the Shadow Temple. I stopped this big behemoth. And it, it, it was cool. It was like, you, I couldn't see something like this on TV. I actually got to do this. You got to play it. It was you. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, Ocarina of Time. That's why Ocarina of Time has a special place in my heart. It was like the first story story I got through. I, it, it, it just kind of changed. Changed, you know? Really cool. I'm in my life, Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy were very big at the time. Like most Japanese players at the time, Yoshida san played all the early Final Fantasy games. He holds them in high regard, though he still holds the bitter memory of not being able to save the last dungeon in Final Fantasy 3. But when he was 11 I think it's years been a big old, shift, though. It's been a big different shift in mindset. Because gaming is such a, PC, a big part of our core PC, the young gamer learned how culture now. Basic. His first video game centered around trying to break into a bank vault. But this PC also exposed him to a spectrum of gaming that eluded most time Japanese players. Western like that's what people, it's games. the same thing he as fell in love with games like anyways, Diablo right? and was stunned when he first went online Ooh, Diab- and played with other players. Diablo, brother. I was playing Ultima Online in beta and I played with my senpai. Old Blizzard, old Blizzard, man. I was playing with my senpai. Remember back then when gaming made you a nerd? Yeah, dude. For real. I think my first real story I completed was Halo CE. Halo CE was so good. I'd have to go to my friend's house to play that. We'd stay up all night playing the story mode. Ultima Online was pretty huge. って言ったらいいんだろうなすごく紳士的なというかコミュニティリーダー的プレイヤーコンプリートリーイーブルキャラクターグッドワングッドワングッドワンキャラクターを2つ作ってプレイヤーズものすごい遊んでたやっぱりそのチュー・チャッド・ブロー・アブソルト・チャッドゲームがどう作られるのかどういったエンジニアリングが必要なのかっていうのも It's cool. People find out you play video games, you're kind of a nerdy geek, and maybe not, at least younger generation. Most people can play. Yeah, it's, 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 just, it's cool now. I think my gamer nerd, and we've been happily married for close to 31 years. Holy congrats, man. I'm going to go to the PC parts. I'm going to go to the PC parts. That's crazy. He did that in all time. I'm going to go to the PC parts. プレイをし始めて当時エヴァクエストのパッケージを日本で手に入れるのが本当に大変で、ちょうど東京に行った時に秋葉原をね時間を作ってゾンビのお店をこううろうろして
kids are going to experience some of the old games. They're going to definitely experience Ocarina of Time. And Ocarina of Time, I feel like, is such a generational game that transcends all generations. Oh, so he got to work on Dragon Quest. That's sick. He was part of the Umbrella Group that was allocating programmers to various projects. He didn't have granular visibility on FF14, but he knew the team was struggling. I asked from his perspective as a... Remember your first game? I remember the first, like, technical game I had. It was, a uh, Resident Evil 2 old graphics. I don't know, yours is Resident Evil 2. Dude, you, you know that game inside and out. Mine was Pokemon Yellow. And, uh, let me, let me give you an insight. I, I loved Pokemon. I watched the anime. I was like, dude, Pokemon is sick. But when I got Pokemon Yellow, I was so excited. I would play that game all the time. My favorite Pokemon was Gengar. Now, I didn't know anything about the trading or anything. I just thought, dude, you can just get Gengar straight out the box. All I had to do was get a Haunter and, uh, you know, just evolve him and we're going to go. I leveled that fucking Haunter all the way up to max level. <laughs> I'm like, bro, what is going on? Why is he not evolving to learn later on? You got to trade Haunter to get Gengar. <laughs> I was so mad as a kid. I was like, dude, why can't I just get Gengar, man? First game was Pac-Man on Atari. Sick. I'm old enough to play my first game was compilation. Pong, Duck Hunt, etc. I got Pitfall on those great ones. The Atari. I, I played a little bit of Atari. My dad had one. My only real issue with 14 is that you have to keep items you want to glamour. Yeah, I, I Producer, where yeah, you thought the game's problems were coming from. I mean, I don't really mind it too much. But while, while transmog is systems a little better, but it took granted, it took them a long time for their transmog to get better. Because if you played in, like, Kata and Mop, you'd have to have the item. Uh, granted, you could... You had to have the item. There was no, like, collection tab or anything. So, like, your bank was just full of fucking just items. You didn't have, like, a armory or anything. Your bank was just full of items. And if you sold it, it was gone. It was, like, removed. You couldn't use it anymore. So, like, that was the old system of Transmog. Oh, my God. I had so much shit in my bank time because I'm like, I need the appearance. Nando, プレイステーション I have a Dreamcast that I picked up for free for work one time because I just had like one like, I don't know, yeah, I have this one. Fuck wants to play this. I just have my PS2, my 360. Yeah, man, the thre 360. So, so goaded. So goaded. I think the, the corporation became arrogant? Jeez. Oh, we're too big to fail. Yeah, Square Enix too big. Too big to fail, right? Yeah, it became, it became a shackle. Like, oh, the, this, we're too big. Yeah, we're too big. Oh, so the best, bro. I still ha I have a mess. NES. Swordsman's creating katana. Dude, creating katanas? Dude, 
That's a numbered Final Fantasy game. It, there's no way it fails. Not the 瞬間にテクノロジーの方がそれを上回るっていう時期が来たせいで、作り方を変えようとはしないし。So they were just doing the same shit and just thought it would work. So they were just doing the same shit and just thought it would work. So they were just doing the same shit and just thought it would work. So they were just doing the same shit and just thought it would work. アセットを作ったので、もうそれらが絡まって、っていうのがまあもう一つの大きな、二つあるって問題の一つ目がそれです。もう一つはプライドはいつ、The pride, yeah, the pride just got in the way, man。思うんですけど、そこにやっぱり超巨大な成功体験をしたっていうこと自体、Oh, because they were, yeah, there it is. Because we're great, we don't need to look at the success of other games and how MMORPGs would work. それがベストであって。他をあんまり見る必要がないっていう時期でもあったんじゃないかなと思っていて、例えば、yes, 世界です。Wow, it's wow。多分 MMORPG を知ってる人に、all of them will probably say World of Warcraft。MMORPG は何ですかって言ったら、百人に聞いたら百人がワールドオブクラフトって言ったはずなのに、誰もプレイしてない開発チームが、これはワールドオブクラフトを知ってるか知ってないかっていう話だけの話をしてるんじゃなくて。その自分たちが世の中に対して新しいそのビデオゲームをリリースしようとするときにライバルになるタイトルは何だろうか。ユーザーは今プレイヤーはどこにそのゲームエクスペリエンスの最大最新の状態をプレイしてるんだろうっていうのを知らないっていうのがその感覚として僕には結構信じられない。なんでもっとみんなゲームプレイしないの。だって自分たちが今どどのあたりにいるかわかんなくなっちゃうよっていうのがまあ大体で特に14の場合に関してはもちろんファイナルファンタジー11の超巨大な成功体験っていうのが邪魔をしたっていうのもあるとは思うんだけどあの当時はエバークエストを徹底的にプレイをしてだからこそ11を作ったんですよ。隣にあるレストランがどんなメニューを作ったんですよ。隣にあるレストランがどんなメニューを作ったんですよ。That's cool. That's smart. What was the feeling within Square Enix? The beta was quite close to launch. Were people anticipating that there would be negative feedback? Or were they less aware that that was going to happen? I guess. Someone tried to fight her. This is for my grand. I saw the news. But I didn't know about it. That's hilarious. I don't know if it's going to be a MMORPG launch. I don't know if it's going to be a MMORPG launch. I don't know if it's going to be a MMORPG launch. I don't know if it's going to be a MMORPG launch. I don't know. Oh, naturally, a player will want to just play it as soon as possible. Naturally, it's just that's that's just naturally. Video games. やっぱり Eleven を作ったチームだから、まあそうは言っても Eleven のやっぱり完成度が高いので、そこと比較をしてあの機能がないこの機能がないっていう話をしてるのかなっていうふうに思う。Hey, Granny's a gangster. I'm not gonna lie. Granny is a gangster. 忙しかったのもあって、ただそれもあの少しずつ収まっていくんだろうなっていうふうに僕は。当時は見てた。ただ別の角度、今度はそのオリジナルの14チームの中のその視点としては、このままだと本当にまずい。<笑>もっと時間をかけて品質を上げないとっていうもちろん声を上げる人たちもいたけれど、会社まあ全体の判断としては、ファイナルファンタジー11のスタートもそうだったと。機能たくさんなかったし。ものすごくネガティブなフィードバックもたくさん来たけど、パッチでどんどん直していって、イレブンは完成したんだから、フォーティーも大丈夫だと、最初は絶対こうなんだっていう風に判断したので、ベータを終わらせてリリースエフに切ったっていうのが当時のジャッジだったって、僕はチームに入ってからインタビューをしてそれを確認したので。チームの中ではやっぱり議論はあったそうです。あのままじゃダメ、まずいって。今お話しした通り、イレブンの時もそうだった。でもイレブンはずっとパッチを続けてああなったじゃないかと
Eventually, corporate realized that this wasn't usual launch problems, so they called on a few select members of the team to create a task force. This Don't task mess force green, yeah. would research what changes the game needed and the resources the development environment would require to do the work. Members of that team would talk to Yoshida-san about their worries after hours. His thoughts were that the current organizational structure would need to be modified if the team was going to make the changes required. Mm -hmm. In October of 2010, mm -hmm. Yoshida-san talked to the then Square Enix president Yoichi Wada and suggested they initiate a company-wide emergency to get the team the resources they needed. Wada-san spent a few days talking to the 14 development team about their concerns, and while a lot of the team had suggested that the current task force was in fact up to the task, some members of the 14 team had pleaded to have Yoshida-san join the project to help. And so it transpired that in late November, Corporate took the decision to remove Hiromishi Tanaka from the team Damn. and move Nobuaki Komodo from director to lead designer. Both of their vacant positions would be filled Damn. by Yoshida-san. Damn, okay. They're like, we need this man. We need this man. I'm getting off topic because so they stay on the topic. No, it's okay. Basically, FF14 was broken beyond repair. Basically, for what I'm gathering, 1.0 was Shadowlands. Shitty release. Shitty game. Shitty. But, you know, at least at least Yoshi P had the uh the, the balls to say that it was it was bad. And then uh go back to the back to basics, back to the drawing board. But I'll just kinda just Oh, Shadowlands bad. We'll just uh, we'll just release uh, Dragonflight, and people will forget it all happened. Getting Yoshida was their best decision ever. The Yoshi P Revolution. Yeah, th this is probably will go down as like one of the best decisions a game company did or an MMO has ever made. Honestly, Shadowlands was playable at least. That is debatable. That is debatable to an extent. In fact, if you want to watch the story of the FF 1.0, there's a video archive on YouTube on all the MSQ cutscenes. Oh, goodness. It was broken beyond any hope. Sometime, I, I don't know, man. I'd rather, I guess, kind of play around with a broken game than a fucking dumpster fire that ruins all your character that you've built up over the past decade. Ruin, uh, ruin your classes. Ruin fun with Chorgast and... Just putting all these requirements on your fucking... To just play the game. It at least... Okay, I will say it at least played like WoW. That was the only thing. It at least just played like WoW. I could at least just go do other stuff that were in other expansions. I didn't actually have to touch Shadowlands. I, I played a little bit of it. I did, I did Castle Nath area, but other than that... No. Not the funny kind of broken. It was the not fun. I hate this. So it's kind of like the uh, the Warlords release, the Warlords of Draenor release. I don't know if any of y'all were there for the Warlords of Draenor release. When I tried to play Warlords of Draenor, I was like two hundred and thirty thousandth in the queue or some shit. It said it would take me like eight hours to get into the game. I had tr server transferred so I could actually play the game. You get in, it's super laggy. You can't play the game. That you can't even interact with a fucking quest a quest giver. It was bad. Warlord it, Warlords had to be the worst launch I've ever been a part of. It was awful. You couldn't play the game. The game, like, oh my goodness. And it was so sad because leveling up in Warlords is actually really good. That was the only good thing about the expansion. Yeah, imagine Warlord released the first few days, but that's the entire game. Oh my god, I could not. I could not. I could not. I could not. My opinion is more fun than BFA. BFA was weird. There were some fun times in BFA, but there were some really bad things in BFA. Let's not be around the At that time, he was leading a team that was working on an original IP for Square Enix. He was disappointed to leave that team, but excited Actually, for the opportunity to work on one again, of the company's the fundamentals were too jewels, broken for any expansion. A numbered that. Final Fantasy so yeah like the thing is when you release something that's just completely broken and unplayable say at the end you do get it to be playable people are still just gonna look at the game and be like this was an this is an unplayable mess i don't even want to play this same thing happened to fallout 76 
it was just stupid and not really very playable and people look at it today and they're like they only think of when it came out the only reason cyberpunk i feel like doesn't get that moniker anymore is because the anime literally saved that game and the continued dedication to fix that game i posted the cutscene bit in the discord we'll check that out yeah I'm, i don't know but I can definitely tell in ARR where there is the like bones of like the older world of Warcraft. And it really shows how much like dedication that they had to like make sure this game was a success. They put their heart and soul, even just in the Realm Reborn, like when I actually paid attention to it, it has so much heart. He got right to work. Mm. <laughs> まあ、オリジナルのチームに。it is it is amazing. Like I said, I think the anime also just gave it new life as well. Like people were more interested in the world and everything. And I really like that the that Project Red took that. They were like, oh, they really like this. So let's put uh let's put Rebecca's gun in the game. Let you get David's jacket. Like it, it's stuff like that. It's just, it's just showing that you care about your product. And Yoshi P really really cares about FF14. Holy. Seven hour video of all cutscenes, so watch on your own time or separate in parts on streams you want. Definitely. Well, I'll definitely probably check it out off stream, like if I'm grinding or something. I don't know. 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 I こいつダメだと思ったら、チーム。オッケー、チャット。見ようでも とにかく立て直しをやるよとギブアップはしないよって話をした時に僕を知ってる何人かはよしやるぞっていう人たちとえもういいもう無理だよっていう人たちとなんだよこの急な体制変更って言ってまあ怒ってる人たちとなんだよ
あいつだけですよやり直すぞっていうかそのリベンジするぞって言ったらガッツポーズしてたのはあいつだけです今でも覚えてます2回席でおっしゃーってやってたんであいつ I saw both reactions I saw the Oh、he's taking care of himself. Went through a year in of these hell, days, yeah. Now he's asking self care is very important. A year and a half of hell to this very important. Point might, Can't be your best you know, if you're not keeping yourself in the best condition. No one had taken a game and rebuilt it in, in this manner before. So basically, he's saying, like, Yeah, you just have to trust me, and yeah, you could, you know, waste another year and a half of your life, and it could be a failure, and you know. But you're going to have to believe me on this one. He had a vision.、Um, and so, yeah, a lot of people are like, I can't do this anymore. I don't know. He had a、and、vision. I can understand that because, again, it, it's a, it was a gamble. But then on the other hand, there were, I mean, a lot of us,、um, you know, myself included, but I mean, a lot of people on the team that were like, no, I mean, we worked so hard on this and we did our jobs the best that we could. But for a lot of, you know, reasons, some circumstances that were out of our control. Um, you know, decisions made by higher ups, decisions made by、Looking、other teams that you know, affected our work and nothing that we could do about it. But we had put our all into it and we were invested in the project.、Um, we still believed in the project. To have someone from the outside come in and not just come in to say, okay, okay you know, <laughs> we're just going to do it my way or the highway. Example of how like, closely they are here for you. You know, he asked our opinions. He laid out a roadmap. He gave、early. us a vision and a hope. And it, yeah, he, that's actually cool. And I think the Season of Discovery devs are taking that approach. Like I said, that when it was like one day everyone was complaining that the layer system, since people weren't on the same layers anymore, was kind of broken. Like you'd be loaded into like a layer with like no one on it. Literally a day later, they hot fixed it. Like I think they, they are taking this approach. Like we need to listen to this stuff. Like people don't want to do that.、They're、like you don't want to load into a dead. Layer where no one's playing is to fix it. People were saying, well, Boomkin and all these other classes are performing really poorly compared to everyone else. They're like, all right, look, we'll, we'll buff the Star Surge, we'll buff Shadow Priest. It's like crazy. It's four minutes. Even though it seemed like it would be difficult to achieve, it didn't seem inconceivable. Yeah, it wasn't impossible. It wasn't was no impossible. Time to wait. He worked with corporate to make sure the team had time off, both for them to relax、wow. and also to give him time to build his、That's、new、crazy. vision, to do research playing other MMOs, and to help him plan to do the vision and how do the, the research. To do it. They had very little time to fix this game, so once they started, the specifications document would have to be watertight. And as captain of the ship, he needed to be able to answer every question the team may have quickly. Yoshida san was now at the helm of his first Final Fantasy, and as an avid MMO fan, he was looking forward to getting in there and fixing it. What he couldn't have known at this stage was the scale of、oh, the、yeah. job ahead of him. That、Omega、no matter how、scale. much they patched Final Fantasy XIV online, they couldn't ever fix it. What they'd have to do was something that no developer had ever done. To rebuild an entire MMO while the original version was still yeah, running. That's fucking crazy. I don't think that they realized immediately that it was something that couldn't be solved via patches. I think they still believe that, you know, if we patch、mm -hmm. it, it'll be fine.、Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until they reevaluated and then brought in, you know, the new blood. You gotta bring in the new blood, man. And, and Different told, perspective.、Okay, yeah, this is not something that can be patched. If we w a n t to fix this, we're gonna have to take a drastic step. Yoshida spent seven weeks researching and returned with two options for corporate. It was then he realized that it would be impossible to convert the current game into an MMO that could last the test of time. Ultimately, though, this was a decision that corporate had to make. So he returned with not one, but two, two plans. Two plans? Plan A and、Holy. Plan B. During this meeting, he explained that Plan A would be to patch the game and make it more playable, but that ultimately the game would never really satisfy players.、Yep. And though Square Enix may make their money back, the d e o g i so s u s p o k e n at the top. Oh, I love listening to him. Yeah, he, like, you, you can tell. You can just tell. And, and it, it, it's just awesome. Damage to the, 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 the team is literally awesome. Holy crap.、And、then there was Plan B. Plan B. バイパッチはすぐにその話だけを聞くと、まあ、そんなバカなってなるので当然どうやってそれを達成するかチームを2つに分けて。
どういったそのマネジメントスタイルでそれをやるのかで大体発売時期はプレイステーション3版をリリースするっていうのがプレイヤーとの約束だったので、oh, so、yeah, プレイステーション3の寿命が来る前にリリースしなきゃいけないので2012年年末から2013年中には絶対リリースできるこの計画であればっていうプレゼンテーションをしてリスクは高いただ当然そんなことをしたことはない成功うまくいったとしても成功するかどうかわからないただ少なくともやっぱりファイナルファンタジーってクレイジーだねとか。Yeah, that, that's also, that's also、like、a good point. Final Fantasy is doing something crazy. That will get a lot of people buzzing. を取り戻そうとしたっていう努力は見てくれてる人は多分見てくれるだろう。だからどっちをチョイスするかは会社に任せる。ただどっちであっても全力でやるよっていう話。ピーナニードルで、まあ、結果的にはね、あのプラン B でって言ってくれたんで。今こうなってますけど。Hard for me to watch stream at work. It's all good. It's all good. You can just keep it on in the background. No, no sweat. No sweat. Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 was in a state of disarray. Square Enix had decided、Mold. to suspend subscriptions to help ease the I mean, the players were molding, let's not be real. The they were justified for molding. Definitely postponed. For the next two years, Yoshida san and his team would work tirelessly on not one, but two MMOs. Patching the original That's crazy. working two MMOs at the same time, though. While secretly working on a brand new version of Final Fantasy XIV. Holy crap, I can never. In our next episode, we focus on that two year period and tell the incredible story of the falling moon of Dalamud. The death of 1.0 and the birth of a new Eorzea. That was part one. Holy crap. Yeah, you really get like a sense of like this, this like. Boom, man. Holy crap. That was. Wow. Even just for a first part, bro? Holy crap, man. Messages didn't go through? It went through that time. Yeah, dude, that's. that's Like, I, I, I have the utmost respect for the FF14 team for that. Because I, I've said it before, it takes a lot of balls to swallow your pride and continue working on the game while making a whole brand new version of the game because. You, The realization that it is just unplayable and having to just go back to scratch. This is probably one of like the biggest comebacks for a game, probably ever, to be honest. One of just the biggest comebacks. Watch Lahim. Sag have to wait till tomorrow for part two. True. Because if I, it, they're like 15 minutes and. <laughs> We'd be here for like almost three hours without continuing the story. It's like half this stream, man. We gotta, we gotta keep suspense. Gotta keep suspense, right? Keep suspense. As a player that stood there during that cutscene, it makes me so happy to see other people fall in love with the game. I hope you do too and enjoy your time. I, I have, I'm awestruck at this game, honestly.